Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Malky Mackay is all set to be named the SFA Performance Director of Football. Celtic establish a record of 19 games unbeaten domestically and the SFA has revealed it will establish an independent review into child sex abuse in the sport of football. That's just a few of the talking points on tonight's programme. Uh, Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm delighted that our boot room guest is Hamilton Aki's player, Doogie Emery. Um, so um, let's get into, first of all, uh, that game last night. Doogie, hard to take. I mean, one nothing is not 8-1 from last season. Um, did you feel or did the lads feel there was maybe something there for you to take from the game? Yeah, definitely. I think um, the last 10, 15 minutes especially, uh, we had a couple of good opportunities to to do better, um, maybe a, a different a different option for one of the young kids to play on someone else in, instead of shooting. But like I said, uh, it's a it's a better result than uh, it was last year. Yeah, um, that one game. It's a hectic schedule for you guys. Is it something that the players relish, or is it something that you think is just a wee bit too much? No, no, it's it's games you want to play in. Um, like you say, last night we had Celtic on Friday night. We've got Rangers, and then a week on Saturday we've got Celtic again. But these are the games for any kid or any player that you want to play in. Yeah, give us an insight into uh, the team you faced uh, last night because again, it's 19 games unbeaten. Um, Ruffy and I have been debating it whether somebody can stop Celtic. You clearly think that there might be someone out there that will stop them going unbeaten through the entire season. Yeah. Like I said, um, you've got to give them the respect that they're due. Um, 19 games unbeaten is a, a great achievement. Um, but like you say, I think there, there's uh, areas there that you can capitalise on. Um, like I said last night, we last 10-15 minutes we, we kind of pressed more higher and, and we got opportunities. Um, and if we'd picked a, a better opportunity or a better pass, then we may have equalised um, with one of the chances. But like I said, um, the first... Uh, 50, 60, 75 minutes, um, they put us under a lot of pressure. Yeah, did it surprise the manager that they played 3 5 2, or did you expect to see Dembele and Griffiths? No, it was uh, it was different. Um, they've been playing with one up top, um, but like I say, they can they can play any formation. Um, they've got a lot of players that they can chop and change, and like I said last night, I think. Um, without Sinclair, that was probably the strongest team that they could have put out. Um, so I, I think in that respect, it shows the respect that they gave us in, in the game. Um, and for us only to get beat 1-0 there is great for us as well. But like I said, it was tough in the night. Um, they had the opportunities to, to go for 2 and 3 and a lot. But um, I thought it was a lot of good performances from a, a lot of um, our younger players last night. Yeah, 11 points clear now, Rocky, mm -hmm. and still games in hand. Yeah, and I mean, I think every every manager that comes on, even Derek McInnes, is, is is admitting it's a chase for for second place, and it's a good chase. Uh, that's a good thing about it. Uh, as far as as Hamlet is concerned, I, I agree with Doogie. I think it's a a morale boosting result, with, particularly with the results coming up. There's nothing worse than having these hard games that they've got coming up, and maybe coming away for Celtic, maybe four or five nothing. So, the dressing room will be relatively comfortable, they'll be happy, yeah. they'll be looking forward to the games that are coming and that's the important thing. Yeah, they, they've got all sorts of choices. Um, who in particular impressed you last night? Um, I think uh, boy Patrick Roberts, uh, who I was up against, I think halfway through the second half I said, you know what, go off. Um, but nah, he was, I thought he was excellent, um, as was uh, Scott Brown, who always is good. Um, Dembele and Griffiths up front. Um, I think Griffiths' uh, movement up there is different class. He, he takes you into places where you don't want to go, and then his pace gets you gets him away from you. But like I say, I thought the our young player uh, Scott McMahon last night was different class. Done done really well against him and didn't give him a lot. Although the the mistake that cost us a goal wasn't his fault. But um, I'd have rather seen Dembele have a, a shot than than square it. Um, I think he was watching too much FIFA last night. <laughs> um, but like I say. Um, to get only beaten one 0 is like Groffy says, is a, a good a good result for us. Yeah. Um, as far as the other game is concerned, Groffy, um, I have great sympathy for mm -hmm. both sets of fans, but particularly Motherwell fans who make the journey up there. Yeah. Seven minutes, lights out, game off. Yeah, you have to say you feel sorry for them. Uh, if they'd have got maybe seventy or eighty minutes and the lights went out, you might have been a wee bit more comforted. But it, it wasn't, you know, seven minutes and the long travel up there. And uh, I think Aberdeen were a wee bit more embarrassed than, than anything else. And uh, in all fair comments to them, the 
They immediately looked at the supporters and came up with ideas, you know, to sort of help them out for the next game. Yeah, uh, I think after 17 minutes you'd feel comfort comforted if you were 4 nothing down and the lights were yeah. out roughly that. Well, that's the point I was making. That's, that <laughs> usually was the score when we went up there. It was usually 3 or 4, so <laughs> you'd be going, please, let something happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think that's the right move, though. Um, you know, mm. the fans, some kind of voucher. They get into the game whenever it's rescheduled. Yeah, I, th I think Aberdeen will push the boat out a wee bit. I think the, the travelling, they'll know exactly how many Motherwell fans have made the trip and it'd be a good gesture. I'm, I know it's money again to maybe lay on buses for them or something like that. And it'd be good if Aberdeen did that. Can't believe, Dougie, that Keith Lasley never just went into the generator, fixed the lights and then back onto the pitch for the game. I mean, you know, he is an electrician. Well, that's true. You never know. You could have went in there and done that. But like Ruffy says, it's it's more the fans that you feel sorry for um, going away up there on a, a Tuesday night um, and then the game getting called off after eight minutes. But like he says, Aberdeen will probably, like he says, maybe push the boy a little bit and, and put buses on for the fans that travelled up. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just like Laz to mention, it was time and a half, Ruffy, so that's why he didn't do it. Um, <clears throat> lots of things that I want to get your thoughts on as well. Um, a couple of things with regards to players. Um, Nadia Sif say there's a wee suggestion he could be going back to Dundee United. I think what we're going to see is a number of players at clubs, you know, trying to mm -hmm. move out players who are not featuring. Well, he's certainly one. I mean, I, I would like to think Dougie would, would, would agree with me. It's all about playing football. You know, it's all right. You might not be getting on with the club that you're at just now, but if somebody gives the opportunity to show what you can do, you take it. You know, if he's in the, if he's not playing, you know, there's nobody going to be interested in him. But at least if he puts himself in there, then D United going well in the, the championship. You know, who's to say that somebody else might remember where he was and how good he was, and uh, both the player and the club will get the benefit of that. Yeah. Before I get to talk to you about the Rangers game on Friday, Dougie, um, you know, there's a, a wee suggestion that Chelsea are looking at Billy Gilmer uh, at Rangers, uh, young players that suddenly are starting to do things in youth games there are scouts you know plenty of them at New Douglas Park watching um, there is a danger sometimes that you can get lost in a big club yeah definitely um, just on that though the the young lad Billy Gilmore I've seen him a, a numerous times um, I think he's a very good player um, and no wonder the big clubs are, are trying to take him to like you say Chelsea so um, but like I say maybe as a young kid, I wouldn't maybe jump in it too early, um, learn your trade at the club you're at and then maybe two or three time, uh, years sorry, down the line, then maybe make that move. Um, I've seen too many kids go to England and you don't see them again um, and then they come back up the road two or three years later. Um, but like I say, he's got the talent, he's got the attributes to, to go there and, and make a name for himself. Um, but like I say, I would maybe hold off a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, wise words because mm -hmm. quite simply, uh, Ruffy, you can chase the, the, the early hit of more money now, mm -hmm. but if you've really got the ability yeah. and you, you know, you're you settled, your home life, everything uh, you know comes into the equation. Yeah, well, we well, were talking two minutes ago about safety, you know, getting a game. You know, it's the same with young players as well. If you're playing week in, week out, and everybody's notes and what you're doing, you know, and you're, you're, you're getting better year on year, why not stay where you are? I mean, I think Scott Allen's a perfect example yeah. of that, you know, who's went back and forward, back and forward. Unfortunately, just now he's at Celtic. We all know the ability that he's got. And, and he could be playing somewhere week in, week out. Yeah, uh, this is a great story to finish the end of the uh, first half, uh, Ruffy. Uh, the Airdrionian shirt we were talking about last week that uh, uh, bears the image of a, a super fan who raised a lot of money and sadly passed away. Um, the shirt sold out in 35 minutes. Um, I mean, it's been... it's. Just a heartwarming story off the back of, obviously, mm -hmm. Mark Wilson, manager of the month in that division too. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I think it's fantastic that the supporters now are getting more involved with the clubs and they're all working together rather than working against each other. And more and more clubs are like that. Yeah, and more and more, um, you don't, we don't need to tell your club because, you know, I think you are the epitome of, you know, a club staying in touch with its fan base, yeah. uh, Doogie. But when you look at per head of populations, Scottish football you know, is always up there, top two, top three. Yeah, definitely. Like you say, our club's got a lot of um, community-based uh, supporters, um, and we do well. We we put a lot of stuff on for the, the local community. Um, like you say, we've got sandcastles and, and chickens out the back um, and play areas for kids to come and, and, and enjoy. It's just walk in, they don't have to to pay anything or that. Uh, the gate's always open and it's, it's always um, as busy as well. 
Yeah, that's a great line. I never <coughs> thought we would hear that from mm -hmm. uh, Doogie Emery on a football show. We have sandcastles and chickens as that's well. Sad. That's in the Christmas. <laughs> that's in the Christmas special oh. show. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'm going to talk to Doogie. <laughs> Don't go for it, Robbie. No. Don't go for it. I'm going to talk to Doogie about the game coming up against Rangers. We'll talk about Lionel Messi. We'll hear from Kilmarnock boss Lee Clark as well. Join us after the break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show on STV. Dougie Imrie of Hamilton Ackies is our bootroom guest. Uh, let's switch our attention now to Malky Mackay, uh, in line to be named the SFA Performance Director. Um, as I expected, Ruffy, it's causing a fair bit of consternation as well, his appointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I think uh, we've all read about what happened uh, at the club he was at. And uh, yeah, yeah, you have to make your mind up where you... Everybody deserves a second chance or not. You know, everybody makes mistakes, and uh, I think the people made bigger mistakes than what he's made. You know, so I think he should be given the chance to show everybody how good he is in football and, and concentrate on the football. I'm sure he'll learn the lesson uh, of what happened, and uh, we ha I just don't think you can ruin such a young guy's career just because of that one thing. Yeah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Ruffy. I mean, I, I know Malky, I don't think he's a racist, sexist, mm -hmm. uh, homophobic, um, and I always think to myself, you know, whether you've got Christian values or not, let anyone who hasn't sinned cast the first stone on this one. I mean, mm -hmm. he, you know, does he sit out the rest of his life and not get a job because of this? I mean, does it send the wrong message mm -hmm. out? That's another um, thing that's been highlighted. I think uh, one of the MSPs um, has highlighted that this, mm -hmm. this is one of the uh, issues that I think a lot of people will look at when he's revealed. Yeah, I, I don't think you can disagree with that, the way society is. You know, you've got to take that on board. You know, I think he's been big enough to come out and apologise to everybody concerned. You know, he hasn't you know, stood his ground and said, oh, whatever I did, I was right. You know, he's apologised. And we have to move on. We have, we have to, we know that he's going to be good in the position that he's in. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's the appointment. And there's people, been, I'm sure there'll be a panel sat down there and looked at the credential that he's got. And that's why he's been given that job, because based on his football experience. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about his pedigree down south, uh, Dougie. Um, he's just got to prove himself and, and improve hopefully uh, grassroots football and obviously you know the connection between the clubs and the SFA but I mean what do you do do you continually continually beat a man for what I've led to believe what three texts out of thousands um, where he made a mistake he didn't apologize prior to being offered this job he apologized at the time yeah. um, when he made an error of judgment yeah like Ruffy says I think everyone deserves a second chance um, I think, like you said, Malky down down south for the teams he's been at has done really, really well. Um, obviously, if he gets uh, the opportunity to take over the SFA performance director role, um, it's about, like you said, trying to get that bond between players and uh, the clubs. Um, I think it's actually going to be changing, um, I'm led to believe. Um, I think they'll be more coming out about that over January, February time, um, on a new structure um, for the, the elite teams. Um, so I think it can all be positive and like you said, um, it's going to be diffi dif different for him um, going from day-to-day -day manager to doing a thing for elite youth kids, um, which can all be good um, and like I've led to believe he's, he's got a lot of good ideas that he wants to bring forward. So like Ruffy says, he can only give the guy a chance. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that's close to your heart at the moment because quite simply you're involved in it. It's something you want to you know, take up, you know, uh, as you get nearer to the end of your career? Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, I'm at the 17s at Hamilton. Um, it's really, really good. Um, the standard's very, very good. But like you say, it's, it's trying to get that next generation to the, the Scotland first team. And if Malky can come up with ideas to, to try and make that better, then, then great. It can only be good for Scottish football. Yep, I, I welcome the appointment by the SFA. Um, I think he's a good choice. Um, 
we all make mistakes. If you think different, give us your view on it at uh, Peter and Ruffy on Twitter and facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy because undoubtedly over the next few days it will be um, a hotly contested debate with people thinking you shouldn't be anywhere near the job uh, and those of us, including some high pedigree managers uh, who've backed him and show racism the red card who've also welcomed uh, the news that he's to be appointed the SFA Performance Director um, does everybody deserve a second chance? Give us your view on that. Um, of course, I'm going to stay with this um, theme with the SFA because they've revealed, roughly that they're going to um, commission a, a, an independent review into the child sex abuse in mm -hmm. football. I, I know Fraser Wishart was talking with uh, the SFA and other uh, parties earlier on in the week. Yeah, but I think we have to be shown to be active. Uh, if, if the police are going to be active, I think we need to be active as well uh, as an association. Uh, after all, it is, it is uh, about football and uh, unfortunately things have happened in the game you know, through the years and uh, I think it would be good if these people that we're talking about are, are caught and something's done about it, it might show the other people who are out there that this is what's going to happen to you. And I think that's the, it's a message we have to send out that we're not going to stand for it for the kids that uh, are coming through the game. Yeah, I, I don't think it's just aligned uh, mm. to football, no, no. Um, Ruffy. I think this will go far and wide as well. Rather worryingly, though, I think um, um, I was listening to a report on the BBC mentioning the fact that somewhere in the region of 2,500 coaches may not have gone through you know, the rigorous screening mm -hmm. process that you would like to think um, would take place for a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate. You know, I would like to think that that would be uh, hurried up, uh, whatever way you do it. You know, I think it's important that the parents who have got kids out there, when they send their kids out to play in these teams, that they're, they're comfortable, that the people who are looking after them are, 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 the, are the right people. OK, um, let's talk about uh, football coming up over the weekend. Of course, Hamilton Rangers next up on the agenda. Um, is it a different style that you guys will prepare yourself for um, against Rangers? And do you feel at home? I mean, I've watched you on two occasions, Dougie. I thought you were the better team against Aberdeen. Um, played really good mm -hmm. football against them. Um, deserved a win. I thought you were the better team against Hearts. Um, and threw away a two-goal lead. Yeah, I, I think it'll be similar to Tuesday night, the game on Friday. Um, Rangers have, have kicked on again. Um, obviously the result against Hearts on, on Saturday to now, by all accounts, they were excellent in the game. So for us, it's about being um, disciplined again, like we were on Tuesday, um, doing what the manager asks us. Um, and I think being at home, you can you can expand and, and get at teams a little bit more. Like you said, the game against Aberdeen and Hearts, I also agree that I thought we were a better team. Maybe in the Hearts game, first half we were, we were a little bit off it, but second half we came out, we scored after 20 seconds, and then we took the game right to Hearts, and, and like you said, we went 3-1 up. And I think if it wasn't for the, the penalty incident, albeit as a penalty, um, we'd probably go on to win the game. Because um, that let Hearts in it a little bit, they got this, their second goal, and then they came at us and put us under a lot of pressure. Um, but like I said, Friday night's got to be the exact same. Although first game of the season at Ibrox, I thought we were for last part of that game in the better team. Yeah, uh, and as I mentioned to you about players that have impressed you in the Celtic side, what about that Rangers team? Is there somebody in particular that you guys always think, listen, you got to keep your eye on them? Um, for me, I th there's a lot of good players in the Rangers team. Obviously, one that crops up is Lee Wallace for me, always very consistent. Um, and I've played with one, I think, this season. <clears throat> I know he's not been in the team the last few weeks, but Barry McKay's kicked on as well. Um, he was at Mortimer when I was there, and was a great kid, great, great talent, and like I say, he's been given that opportunity since Mark Warburton's come in, and he's, he's kicked on again. But like I say, they've got they've got good, good players. Kenny Miller, another one, uh, very experienced, uh, works really, really hard. But so, as do all the players. Um, that's why they're at Rangers because they're good, good players. So for us, uh, like again, we need to we need to be um, defensively sound. Um, compact and when we got the opportunities to try and take them. Yeah, um, Do you feel as if you guys have got enough not to be worrying about relegation this season? Uh, to be fair I think this season we've done really really well <laughs> I think we've played 16 games this season, I think 11 of them have took the lead um, albeit the only game I think we've probably been very poor against Motherwell um, and that was the first 20 minutes of that game we were, we were very very poor but after that we could we could have won the game and um, I know that sounds silly, but um, we Ali's got a chance 
that's the post. Um, we had another one from two yards, the defenders put it wide. If that goes in, it's 3-2 at half-time. We came out second half and I think we we done really, really well. Um, mm -hmm. I know Marble won the game 4-2, but like I say, it's the fine margins. It, it either win your games or you lose games. And this season, I think we've been played really, really well in a lot, a lot of games, but just not been able to kill teams off. Yeah, you've convinced me, Dougie. I mean, I think you're going to be safe. Ruffy thinks you're gone. No, I... I, I <laughs> <laughs> so every time a old player comes in, you say that. I'm only saying that if, <coughs> the, 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 the reason they're going to struggle is because, <coughs> as, as Dougie's just said there, they can't seem to get that second goal. Yeah. <coughs> well, um, we shall find out on Friday uh, how they fare against Rangers after a hard-fought 1-0 defeat against Celtic last night. Great to hear from uh, Dougie Imrie on the programme. Uh, good to have him on the show. Uh, join us tomorrow on uh, Peter and Ruffy's football show. We will have uh, Malky Mackay's agent, Raymond Sparks, uh, joining us to talk about uh, what we believe is his imminent appointment as the SFA Performance Director. From Ruffy, from myself, Peter Martin, and from Dougie Henry. Thanks for watching. Good night.